start. <laughs> okay, so welcome back. Uh, we're still in chapter chapter eleven, which is the hierarchical, right? Hierarchical and and group uh, time series, and. Uh, I propose uh, last session. I propose to work on the on exercise one of that chapter, which is uh, based on the PBS, what is called the Australian Prescription uh, Data Set, and it has some interesting uh, situations when you try to apply what we learn with the tourism with the prison uh, data set. You know, uh, as, as a, when a train series has a, has a definite structure, definite levels, etc. So, uh, the first thing that the author asks is that we should aggregate using this structure. So, ATC one, we're using the scripts uh, data data from the from the data set because also it has the cost. So the cost we're going to use it. So we're going to use the scripts, and then. What is going to happen is like tourism. Remember the state and the region that it had like a parent-child relationship. Well, ATC one and ATC two has the same relationship. Okay. In fact, if you look at the data set, I'm going to show it to you right now. If you look at that data set, okay, I already run everything because it takes a while <laughs> uh, to run the, all the models. So. Uh, it's already uh, it's already there. So what you're going to see, I don't know if you can can you see it? Uh, good, uh, Federica. Okay. So you have a month a month a monthly uh, parameter monthly date. Aha. Go ahead. If you can just zoom in a bit the code because it's uh, quite um, a very tiny uh, thing to see. Okay. Let me check. Appearance. Let me see if I can. How is that? Yeah. Is that better? Okay, yes. You can um, even uh, do control plus, command plus. Uh, See, because this is this is the 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 ID. I know in the browser. Uh, yeah, that's okay. If you do command plus or command uh, minus, they should. Uh, um, you mean control plus? No. Yes, a command in on on Mac. It's CMD. Yeah, but but I'm I'm in Windows. Okay, control control plus. Okay, let me let me check here. This. Okay, no, it doesn't. Yeah. It, okay, let me see if I can zoom a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. That's better. Fine. Okay, yeah. so in this data set, what we have is um, a monthly period, right? The monthly period. We have something called concession. We see it's a label that has two uh, uh, two labels, concessional and I forgot the other one, but you know it is there. Then the type copayments, right? Uh, and there's another one, also another another label there. Uh, the ATC, which is the group of the prescription. Okay, so for example, A. Uh, the uh, relates to alimentary tract and metabolism, and they are all the prescriptions that are related to that particular, uh, you know, subgroup, subgroup of uh, of 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 of, of, uh, of of medicine. Then the ATC two, it follows the ATC one, but then it kinds of details from that group, alimentary and tract metabolism. Okay. Zero 05 is going to be medicine for the bile and liver. Uh, zero 04 is going to be for you know some other thing. So that ATC1, ATC2 is you know interlinked. Okay, it's one group and it's a group. Okay. 
And then you have your, your script and your cost. We're not going to use the cost, we're going to use the scripts, okay? Okay, so this one was really tricky, okay? And I will, you know, try to guide you through the whole process that I had to do, you know, it took me, it took me a while to, 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 to figure it out. But when I ran the same scripts that we were using for prison population, okay? You know, aggregating, uh, doing the modeling, doing the, the reconcile with the bottom sub and the mint. In the mint T, there was an error, okay? And what happens is that some of these series, they have zero, okay? You know, some are constant or, or some of them have a zero between that time series. And that's, that was provoking an error. I searched for it, you know, Google search, et cetera. And the, one of the authors, uh, Rob Hyman, he said that in order to avoid that, you have to introduce like a random noise, okay? So instead of zero, you're going to have something, something there, like a, like a decimal or something, okay? So I went to go, I went back uh, to when we started, you know, exploring this time series. And there was an exercise that we did in chapter two, all right? And in chapter two, there was an exercise on this data set and you had to build a function to uh, detect in a time series, detect if there was a standard deviation that was minimum, okay? The minimum standard deviation. So what I did was use that function to determine which were the time series that had zero. Okay, you know, it, it, they don't, they, they didn't have a variance. In other words, the standard deviation was zero, all right? So this is the function, all right? Uh, that I took from the, you know, from that, from that chapter, this is the function. And then I apply it to the, the time series, right? I'm filtered by standard deviation equal to zero because I want to detect that to see if then I can correct the problem. So here we go, okay? And the ones that are, remember the concessional that I told you that it has two labels? It's concessional and general. And the copayments also has two labels. So this time series has general as concession, type as copayments, the ATC is R, the ATC2 is R2. In other words, there's no subgroup for it, just, you know, a straight R and R. It has mean zero and standard deviation zero. Okay, so what I did was then construct a mutate, right? This is the mutate to add, okay, if those scripts are zero, okay, uh, give me some random noise there, okay? Uh, remember that this, uh, uh, the scripts, and you can see in, you know, when we skim the, the data set, okay, we get a, a, like an X-ray of the data set. You see that the scripts, have minimum zero, of course, because you know zero is there, but then the maximum number is 1,600,000, whatever. So the range is really big. So that little random noise that we're introducing when the script is zero is really insignificant, right? Because the range is so big that that is going to be considered almost a zero, okay? For, you know, human, interpretation. For the machine, it, 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 it will matter, but for us, it won't matter, okay? So we mutate, then all those zeros, we're going to mutate, so, you know, we have some wiggle, wiggle there, okay? I, you know, chose, for example, uh, mean, you know, give, give me a, a, a normal, a, a random number according to the normal distribution on mean 0.1 and some deviation 0.05. Why those numbers? Because I want to maintain positive numbers, okay? So between 0.1 and 0.05, you know, minus or, or, or plus or minus is going to go from 0.05 to 1.5, okay? Point, excuse me, 0.05 and 0.15. So it won't give me any negative values and that's important, all right? So I had to do that, you know, that uh, uh, little, you know, uh, a wrangling, a data wrangling there. And then now I have my time series, the hierarchical structure, structure group, I have a ready 
for the aggregation that the that the textbook is is is, is asking us. So this PBS SD, which is the ones that were those zeros were converted to that you know uh, little decimal, uh, they're going to are going to then aggregate, you know, use the aggregate key to then create that structure of the ones that the textbook is is uh, is is, uh, is giving us. And this is this is the the data set, PBS HTS, right? And this is the data set with the aggregated each of the each of the fields that we're aggregating, you know, ag aggregations. Okay. Another thing that I found uh, that you asked uh, Federica last time is why, when we take out the aggregation, then we can see the labels. Okay. And I uh, did this, uh, you know, this experiment with this, uh, you know, time series to try to understand better what was happening. So as you can see, the aggregate key is going to introduce this aggregated field into that, you know, column, okay? It's going to get that aggregation. So then you can play with different levels depending on where you want the forecast, what, what, what type of structure you want to forecast, okay? So if you want to forecast the total, you know, at the top level, you just use the aggregates and that's it. Okay, so you filter by the aggregates and then the details are filtered, all right? So let me show you, you know, uh, what, 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 it, what is happening. So if you go to view, okay, I aggregated by ATC2, all right? I said, okay, filter everything that is aggregated by ATC2. So because ATC1 and ATC2 are combined, child and, child and parent, is also going you know, to give me the ATC2 detail and also the ATC1 detail, just you know, getting rid of that aggregation. So as you can see now, we can forecast for ATC1 and ATC2 because consolidated concession and type are already aggregated, okay? So what you do is try to you know, play with those aggregations to see what kind of levels we want uh, to forecast, okay? Uh, is 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 uh, am I am I being you know uh, if if it's it's a better uh, explanation now? Okay, so that aggregation comes from the aggregate key. So the aggregation you're going to play. If you want the aggregate at top level, you're going to you know filter by that. If you don't want that, you're going to filter against that. Okay, not aggregated, all right? Okay, so now that we understand that, I had to uh, use something from a, another library that is not here, it's called TimeTK. And that library give us the, the ability to plot every time series that is contained in that, in that structure, okay? And this is the result uh, from this some, from this script. Okay, it takes it takes a while. From this script, this is the result. Okay, I put it in viewer here. Okay, and you can see by ATC two. Okay, which is the bottom level, you can see every time series, you know, from each of the labels of ATC two. Okay. So this one uh, I'm using in that time TK, I'm using the mutate, filter, all, all that. But then I'm using this argument from the plot time series called Trelliscope. So time TK, what it does is that it calls that package, Trelliscope JS, and that package gives us the ability to, you know, uh, do, do facet wraps, but in, a, in kind of a pay pagination way, okay? So for example, if I, if I try to do this with the, you know, with the library, with the F, FPPT library, it will give me all the, the time series uh, plots in one page, okay? The trellis scope, what it does is that it paginates. So as you can see here, you have one or nine, you know, nine plots, but there's a total of 84 plots, okay? So you can go here, uh, you know, with this arrow, you can go here and check 
each of the time series of that structure, okay? And that's, and that's wonderful because you sometimes have to see what is the pattern of each of the time series to see if there's any problems, okay? And that's what I use to catch that problem, not only on, on the constant variance, but also on time series when there is a range, when there's some zeros. And that also was giving that error in the main team. Okay, and I want to show you, you know, one of them. For example, this one, C C05. C05, you see that, you know, from, it starts, it starts with certain, you know, certain scripts, certain numbers, but then it drops out to zero, okay? So this time series, it was going to have problems with the mean T because the mean T, it tries to minimize the variance. So if there varies between, you know, some of the ranges, then you're going to have that error, okay? Now you don't have that error because I introduced that random number, okay? So it's not really zero, you know, because the range, because of the range, you see that it's zero, but it's not. Okay, you see that there, there's a value there. Okay, you see 2.5, 5.4, 5 uh, you know, uh, uh, negative 0, 01, which is a decimal. So this is 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.04, etc. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, you know, that, uh, that plot, you know, that time, that library, time TK is, you know, is gold, is gold for especially this. When you have multiple time series that you want to, you know, see in detail, uh, this is one of the ways, you know, to to uh, to do it. Okay, uh, let me let me put it in the in the chat. So we have that information. The library is called Time Time TK. Okay. 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 So now that we know more or less, you know, what is the shape of the time series, et cetera. Now we can do some exploratory analysis, but at the aggregate level, okay? So one of the things that the authors uh, ask us is produce plots of the aggregate scripts by date, by that, uh, scripts data, sorry, by concession, type, and ATC1. So we are going to do a, a summary, right? by concession, by type, and then by the ATC one, which is the first group, right? The ones that have the letters, just, just one letter. So here, uh, I'm just going to, you know, uh, do the same, you know, the same routine, the same plot. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to play with the aggregated, right? With the aggregated to, if I want concession, for example, I want to see the, the, the labels of the concession, I have to get rid of the aggregated there. So for example, in the concession, I'm going to put an exclamation point that I'm going to get rid of the aggregated of the concession, but then I'm going to keep the aggregates of the other ones. Okay, so I just want that number on concession and general, okay? The same thing for the, the type and the same thing for the ATC one. Okay, so I'm just playing with that, you know, uh, aggregated or not aggregated. Okay, then when we do this uh, three plots, we get this. Okay. Right. So we got here all the time series aggregated by concession, which is concession and general, right? Concession is the one on the top, general at the bottom. Then we have the type, which is type is copayments and safety net. So we have copayments and we have safety net. And then by ATC1, we have all the time series grouped by each of the ATC ones, which are the groups for the prescriptions. Okay. And we can see, you know, there's one here, okay, that is really at the top of the of the list, you know, very popular, right? Okay. It has to, you know, you have to see you know which color is the one that uh, matches. And then we're going to see that there are some that are very low, okay? This one has a big trend, uh, this one though, okay? So we're going to be playing uh, with that with the different models. Okay, uh -huh. uh, yeah, when you, when you call time TK, it automatically uh, calls 
uh, Trellis Code uh, JS, but you have to install it first. Okay, so you have to install it, but then T ten TK, you know, uh, uh, captures captures the, the the library. All right, yes. Okay, so now we're ready to forecast, right? Okay, now we know more or less, you know, the landscape of the time series, you know, the complexion, etc. So now we can uh, forecast. I'm not going to run it because this takes some time. This takes a couple of minutes. But the first one that I run was at the top level. I want to see, you know, what is the behavior of each of my models, the ETS, the RIMA, and the uh, seasonal nine, but at the top level, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to keep those aggregations at the top level, okay? I'm not going to turn it off, you know, uh, not, not, none of them. Then I'm going to model by that. So this is the fit, right? I already have it there. This is the fit. And it's just one model, right? Because we're going at the top. And we're going to forecast for three years. All right. That was another... Uh, uh, you know, thing that I had to figure it out. This time series ends in 2008, June, uh, June 1st, okay? It doesn't end on December, it ends on June. So the author asked for, uh, you know, to use the training data to use it, but just take, you know, the data until three years, until three years from the from the end. So three years from three years from the end is going to be my test set, and then the rest is going to be my training set, right? Okay. So I'm going to apply the forecast on the training set, but it's going to be until that date, until that day when you know it has the three years to the end, right? So because it ends in June. My three years then begin in 2005, July 1st, right? You know, 2005, seven, one. That's going to be my, my test set. So I have to filter to get the forecast. I have to filter by all the data that is before, right? Or equal to 2005, June 1st, all right? So you have to figure that that out, you know, in terms of you know this time series because time series remember that it has a sequence. So you have to see, okay, this is my chunk that I want to use as training, and this is the rest of the chunk that I'm going to use as my test uh, data set. All right. So you're going to see in every of the of the of the instructions, are you going to see that that mutate? Okay. Then uh, to get the numbers more manageable, and they do it in the in the exploratory analysis of the of this data set. Uh, they divided by a thousand or a million. I divided by a thousand uh, only, just to give you know uh, the numbers uh, getting the thousand, uh, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand. Okay. Then we got our training. Now we're going to do our forecast, and this is going to be the forecast for the next three years, which is going to be our test set to check you know how how well are, are the models doing. So this is the forecast, right? And you have the model, right? You have the month, you know, or the, or the test set. You have the scripts, which is just going to be uh, the mean and the standard deviation. So you have a mean, a, nor a normal mean of 14,582 and a standard deviation of this one, which is very large. So the mean is really your prediction. Your point forecast is going to be the mean, all right? And that's the number that you're going to be, uh, using to calculate your uh, accuracy, okay? So if you go and plot this, this is what you get at, at, at the top level, at top level, okay? So you get the ARIMA with, you cannot see it that well, but it's the red color. I don't know if you can see it very well there. You see the green, which is the ETS, and then the blue one, which is the one that is kind of, you know, you know covering everything is the seasonal night, all right? And we can see at least, you know, from the plot, I can see that at least ETS is the one that is hugging, hugging those, you know, seasonal and, you know, uh, uh, spikes, uh, 
uh, a, a, you know, a, a spike series there, okay? Then when we go to the accuracy, right? Uh, I use RMSC, like in the book, RMSC and uh, uh, Massey, okay? Mean average square error. Massey is the one that it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't care about the scale of the, you know, of, of, of the numbers. The RMSC, uh, it cares, and you will see what happens in the ETS. But the, the Massey is the one that it doesn't. You know, it has, because of the formula, it doesn't care about the, the numbers. It could be billions, okay? And it's going to give you the same number. It doesn't matter the scale, all right? So we have that top model. Now we want to see which of the models that we are, you know, forecasting ETS, ARIMA and uh, s naive, do they get better if we do the reconciliation, okay? So the reconciliation, uh, we're going to use the bottoms up and we're going to do the mean T, right? Okay, because that's what, you know, more or less, you know, that, 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 that's what they're asking. Uh, they're asking for the mean T, but I also use the bottoms up just to get another, another measure. So for that, we have to get to the bottom, okay? Get to the bottom level, forecast those bottom levels, and then let the reconciliation do, you know, the, 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 the upbringing to the top level, all right? So the way that we're going to do it for the ETS is that we're going to filter by concession, by type, and by ATC1. We're going to leave the ATC2, you know, uh, 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 not, not aggregated, okay? Then we're going to do that. It's going to take some, a, a while, but this is going to be what, you know, uh, you're going to, we're going to get, okay? The, the, the reconcile. And we're reconciling by, let me see, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I jump here. Okay, here it is, here it is. Okay, this is the reconciliation, sorry. That, that was the, that was the, you know, the problem already. You're going to use the same uh, time series, you know, that we have. We're going to do the mutate, the filter, etc., and we're not going. Uh, we're going to leave it as it is, okay? Because it it has the aggregations, but it also has the details. The the the, the full data set has everything, okay? So we're going to leave it that way. We're going to model by the ETS scripts, and then we're going to reconcile, okay, by the mean t. And this is what you are getting, okay? You're getting a, a model for each of the time series, okay? For the ATC1, ATC, ATC2, ATC1, concession and type, all right? So you're, going, you're, you're getting every, everything forecast. Now the reconciliation can, can do his work, right? It's going to do the bottom up from the, from the bottom level is going to go up and then it's going to reconcile on that. So you are, you are going to do the forecast, right? You're going to do the forecast with the three years, et cetera. And then this is the plot for the model and for the reconciliation, okay? And as you can see, uh, you know, we have the three models there. We have the ETS, we have the bottom sub, and we have the M MT, mean T. And the one that is really doing better here, I don't know if you can see it, Federica, but the one that is doing better here, uh, uh, you know, as the eye can see, is the original model, okay? So to get the accuracy, to see if what we're seeing is the same as the accuracy level, uh, you know, we evaluate the models, right? And then we get that. Remember that I told you that the RMSC is very susceptible to the range? Okay, that's why you get these big numbers. Okay, that's why it's better in this case. It's better to follow the Massey, the Massey uh, 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 metric. Okay, and remember that we had twenty one point four, right? Twenty one point four was at the top level. Okay, so now with the reconciliation, the ETS is only at, at the you know the the, the 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 model at the bottom level. It has only 1.21. The bottom sub is 1.49 and the mean T is 2.01. So what we can see is that the ETS by itself without any reconciliation is doing better 
a forecasting that test data set than the reconciliation models, okay? And also is doing much better than the top level, right? Okay, because remember, you know, we're, we're doing it at, at, the, at every, every level of the, of the time series, okay? Then we do the same with the ARIMA, okay? We do our forecast with ARIMA, we do our you know, reconciliation, et cetera. And this is the product of ARIMA. Okay, I have it there just in case you know, it, it, uh, it takes some time, but this is the product of the ARIMA. And as you can see, the Massey, right? The Massey is uh, higher, higher than the ETS. So ARIMA is not improving our forecast compared to the ETS. So right now, ETS is the one that ain't giving us the best forecast right, right now, okay? I mean, it's, it's going to, you know, it's going to do its stuff there. Then we're going to do the same thing with the seasonal naive, right? And in the seasonal naive, something interesting happened. And it's because of the way that the seasonal naive do, does its forecast. In the seasonal naive, you have the same metrics for the model, for the bottom sub, and for the mean T. Okay, you have a massy of 2.28. There was no, you know, there, there was no improvement or you know uh, uh, deterioration or any, anything like that. And the authors uh, ask Esal, you know, why does the reconciliation make any difference to the seasonal naive forecast? So I went back to that chapter, the season naive, and what happens is that the season naive is giving you a constant forecast, okay? It's going to give you a constant forecast at each of the seasons uh, there. It's not going to change, okay? It's going to give you the seasonal, but it's not going to give you any trend, all right? So what happens is that the seasonal, really the variance is, is zero. <laughs> The variance is zero because it's, it's a constant, it's a constant number that you get to have for the horizon of the forecast. So that's why the bottom sub at the mean T, they're not going to do anything, you know, any, any, any improvement with it because the mean T in particular try to minimize the variance, but there's no variance in, in the seasonal naive. There's no variance. It's just, you know, those constant numbers. So that's why in the seasonal naive, you have, you know, that. The reconciliation doesn't work there for that model. It works for the ETS, it works for the RIMA, but not for seasonal life. Okay, those are the numbers for the, the RIMA. All right. So, uh, conclusion ETS model. ETS model uh, was, was the best uh, in this case, you know, according to, you know, uh, this, this, uh, you know this, this, this study. Uh, the reconciliation didn't improve uh, the the, the model, you know, the ETS by itself did the best, you know, did the best uh, metric. In the ARIMA, we see that the mean T uh, and the bottom sub, uh, excuse me, the mean T stays the same, but the bottom sub is a little bit, uh, you know, up, okay? So also in the ARIMA, the reconciliation also didn't help, right? And in the seasonal naive, what happens is that because the seasonal naive is give you constant, you know, numbers for the forecast for, you know, it's only for the seasonality, but there's no trend there. So you have fixed numbers for the forecast for the horizon. There's no variance. And this reconciliation works, the mean T works with minimizing the variance. So there's no variance. There's nothing to reconcile here. Okay. And basically that's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exercise one. <laughs> so what 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 do, what do you have? <laughs> I have some questions about the reconciliation. Okay. Let me just uh, go back to uh, the uh, reconciliation part when we apply. Because I didn't really. Um, so what happened there, basically? I I hear you a little bit low. Let me see. 
Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, can you can you hear me? No. Okay, yeah, I can hear you better. Uh, I'm I'm raising the volume here. Okay. So uh -huh. Uh, okay, uh, so I was saying, what about the reconciliation? Can you the, just give me a bit more light about that? The what, the what? The reconciliation. Uh-huh, yes. Okay, we need a reconciliation here with this data set, right? Which is yeah. the PBS, the PBS with the, you know, with the random numbers, uh, you know, which I think the zero with the random numbers, uh, selecting the, you know, the columns that we're going to be uh, working to, you know, the discarding basically the, the cost and then doing the aggregation as, you know, as, uh, as directed by the, uh, you know, by, by the exercise, right? Which is the ATC1 slash ATC2 parent and child, then interact with the concession, interact with the with the type, okay? So that one is the one that we're using for the reconciliation, that, mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that data set, okay? Because when we did the total, right? When we did total, uh, we could use the original one, okay? Because we're doing at the top level. But here for the reconciliation, you need that hierarchy, okay? You need all those forecasts in that hierarchy. And then depending on which is the one that you, you know, want to forecast, then, you know, you have to use that, that mechanism of the reconciliation. But as you can see, that's not, a, the reconciliation is not a guarantee that your model is going to improve, all right? because we just saw that the ETS model without the reconciliation has a better metric, you know, has a better performance than the reconciliation bottles up and minty. So it's not a guarantee that it's going to improve. You, sh you sh should do it, you know, to make sure that, you know, uh, that there's no improvement because if there's an improvement, then you will go that way, okay? But if there's no improvement, then you stay with your model. And that's the, one of the conclusions that the models by itself are, are doing the best forecast that you can that, that you can do without their reconciliation. Okay, when we studied the prison <laughs> population, we saw that yeah, there was a there was an improvement. There was an improvement in the you know using the reconciliation, but here I don't see it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, so uh, it's uh, two thirty nine. Um, uh, there were there were other exercises there. Okay, but uh, I don't know if you want to, you know, if you want to discuss it uh, because this 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 was, the, this was the one that was really you know uh, uh, most important because you could you could see when you apply the theory. Uh, sometimes in the you know in a, in in a particular data set you will have certain situations that you have to consider that usually in the theory doesn't explain and that's one of them <laughs> precisely that for the mean t you need you know a time series that doesn't have a constant a constant uh, value okay so if you have zeros or in the ranges you have zeros uh, or 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 a, or, a, or a constant value in this case it's zero but if you have let's say one or two whatever but it's constant, there's no variance, you're going to have uh, errors, okay, in your execution. Yeah, yeah. I had uh, a look at the following chapter. I think it is, we, we're fine in case, and then that okay. about the other exercises, that was nice to have a look at the bootstrap and everything, but uh, right. uh, yeah. Um, as we um, might want to go forward, Mm -hmm. I had a quick look at the, the chapter, but I'm not, I'm, I think I'm, it's better if we do it next 
next week. Yeah. Uh, sure. yeah. Would be can can I just mention a bit like uh, an introduction, uh, which uh, is going to yeah. be very. Um, oh, where is it? Yeah, well, uh, why, why? Yeah, I share my screen. Uh, which is um, uh, okay. Uh, b basically, we are uh, we will be going through more advanced methods. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you can see, we um, we see uh, more or less the some some of the data sets we do already used, but now we like make make them uh, a bit more articulated okay so mm -hmm. we have some uh things about uh complex seasonalities uh, and yep. so we basically go through picking up the uh, time series to have a look at this um the peaks in more details uh, and so we see some uh, other interesting application. We're still using the same models, but we now like applying some um, data transformations uh, as well as all the other things that we already did. Eh? Uh, what else uh, um, were to mention is that we have a new type of model, which is profit. Uh, and profit is an uh, important uh, type of model to use within uh, time series. And so we are going to have a look at this and apply, uh, where is it? Okay, basically it's, it's just as the same um, because this uh, package is fantastic. Okay, so it makes life easier. So you just apply the things, you know. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Here we have a new new um, um, package, which is Fable Profit, uh, and uh, then once you load it, you can just use the Profit function uh, and apply Profit as any other uh, model. Okay. Then uh, um, we are going to have a look at autoregression neural networks and then bootstrapping. So mm -hmm. I suggest to, because it's a, um, if we want to, I don't know, we want to have a uh, nice look at the, this chapter, we might need a couple of settings. Mm -hmm. Or otherwise we just uh, scroll uh, down uh, to the thing and then do a couple of exercises. Yeah. yeah? I might be the best way. I'm, I'm so, good with any, any approach you want to we want to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because even even the, this bit here with the neural network uh, apply to time series, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then again, we mentioned about bootstrapping, and so we might want to do an exercise here with bootstrapping. Yep. Yeah, but uh, um, it's better if we start from, from next week. I don't think um, we had a quick, uh, you know, look around the chapter. All right, so uh, I believe that we're almost getting getting to the end, okay? Because that's going to be chapter 12. Uh, probably we'll need two sessions for the theory and then some exercises. And then there's chapter 13, uh, yeah, chapter 13 also, you know, has some theory, et cetera. So probably we could do it in four, in four sessions, okay, to finish the, finish yeah. the book. Yes, yes. Oh, nearly to the Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. Uh, what, one more thing. Um, John is in the, uh, in the uh, our, our uh, New York Art Conference uh, there, and I want a ticket <laughs> to attend virtually that that conference. All right, because you know I was I was doing a, a webinar, 
you know, with that with the guys that are sponsoring that. And I I, I want a ticket, you know, random. <laughs> I want it. Ah. Uh, I've been I, I I've been attending, you know, yesterday and, and today, and they're attending the the conference. It's very good. There's one I posted. I posted in the Slack. There's one that the guy that gave the, the presentation is the author of one of those packages, a fable, okay? A fable. And now I understand, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the things that I found a little bit confusing in terms of the forecast package and the fable package, okay? okay. So the forecast is an older package. And the problem is that the forecast, he uses base R. He doesn't use the tidyverse. Uh -huh. Fable uses the tidyverse. And in fact, they created a new table called Sybil, <laughs> okay, for time series, okay? And, 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 it's, and it's, uh, it's following the tidyverse, uh, uh, you know, rules. So that's something that now, you know, hints at us say, oh, okay, now I understand what's, what the heck is going on. Because when, when you load the FPP3, you load everything. Okay, so you don't know exactly you know, which one are you using, forecasting, forecast or fable. And he says, you know, you should use more fable, <laughs> you know, from now on, because forecast, they're not doing any, any new development. Okay, they're just maintaining that for legacy, for legacy systems. But the fable, Sybil, that's the, that, that, that's the model that we are, we are investing time in it. All right. Oh. And he worked with uh, one of the authors, uh, Rob uh, Hyman. In, in, in fact, you know, he, he, he was one of his, uh, you know, he was all the professors there in, in the university. So yeah, Ma Michael, uh, his name is Michael O'Hara. Uh, and and the, the presentation was excellent. I said, man, now I understand what the heck is going on with this package. <laughs> yeah, because remember that I told you that I had to figure out which ARIMA to use because there are different ARIMAs. BASIR, BASIR has ARIMA. Forecast has a Rima, Fable has a Rima, and they're, they're, they, they were totally different, okay? So usually you should have that in mind that if you're going to use something, the best way is to use the Fable package, not the Forecast package, okay? okay. So that's, that's, the, that's, that, that, that's what I got from the, from the presentation. <laughs> but yeah, and also John, he's there. He did a whole thread, you know, of the slides and everything. So very nice. Very nice. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Okay. I'll see you next week. Sure. Okay. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye. Stop.